Today we're busting myths about Rhett and Link's favorite foods. Every chef knows there are unbreakable rules in the kitchen, but what happens when you actually break those rules? Do Rhett and Link rain fiery vengeance upon you and your family, or are they just arbitrary myths peddled from chef to chef just waiting to be busted? To find out, we've assembled this highly trained team of serious culinary professionals to put them to the test. Because this is myth. Myth Munchers! Yeah. You're ready to get out of this place and start a competition cheer team that overcomes obstacles both internal and external to ultimately become victorious? Yeah. Yes! Yeah! yeah. Finally, yeah. someone asked! Jesus! All right, uh, for, first off though, first off though, we gotta discuss, oh, I made some changes, I know, we made an entire diagram about myself. What had happened was, new year, new Josh. The parted hair, the long hair, it's coming back. I've started wearing more necklaces, not wearing one right now, because I'm afraid that I'm gonna get it hooked on kitchen machinery and I'm gonna die. I've seen too many Final Destination movies. Shout out Devin Sawa. Uh, jorts, as you can see, I've invented a new style of pant where I've elongated my jorts. They are now long jorts, which I'm calling jongs. So that's very exciting for me. Also, moisturize. Started going to a gym that has a free tubs of moisturizer, just open buckets. We all dip our hands in there. That's my skin, it's still very dry. I don't know what's happening, if anybody has any oh advice. Oh my god, get some cocoa butter. People keep saying snail cream. Reptilian. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's about all my updates for the new year. Um, We gotta talk about some myths. We're Who's munching. that? We're munching. This is, I think, a biblically accurate Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. We're doing something a little different today. We're actually busting Rhett and Link's favorite food myths. So Rhett, as we all know, loves beans. Yeah. There's one prevailing myth about beans, whether you have to soak them overnight before you cook them or you don't. I'm kind of torn on that. I'm excited to see what we come up with here. Rhett also loves barbecue. He's a little North Carolina boy. North Kakalaki is indeed in the house and we are doing pulled pork. Everyone says you gotta use a real smoker to make barbecue. We are going to test some home smoking methods, wood chips in your oven, the only way to get live smoke on it, but we're gonna test out some liquid smoke too. We're also gonna see if you even really need smoke, if you're just making a pulled pork sandwich loaded up with coleslaw. Uh, so we're gonna test that out. Link famously doesn't seem to enjoy food. He seems to enjoy <laughs> kvetching about how he doesn't enjoy food. So, he does happen to love cereal though. We are going to, this is the dumb, I'm sorry. This is the dumbest myth we've ever tested here, but we're gonna test <laughs> pour, pouring your milk first or your cereal first actually results in soggy or less soggy cereal. Uh, Welcome to our cooking show. Then we are doing smash burgers. Link loves smash burgers. Every time people make smash burgers, you see him roll the meat into a ball, smash it down. That is not my preferred method. I ain't never believed in that. I always make a patty and then smash it. We're gonna see if there's any difference in the total Maillard reaction and crusting of that smash burger. You ready to get to it? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Do it! Are you ready to channel our inner Nicholas D'Agosto and Eric Christian Olsen? Heck yeah! The movie fired up about oh, male great, cheerleaders. Great movie. Come on! Great movie. God, they don't make movies like they did in the mid 2000s. Give me anymore. an M. M. Give me a K. K. What's that spell? M K. Mythical, oh, because kitchen. mythical kitchen is too long to spell out right now. Woo! All right, everybody, you're gonna grab your cards. You're gonna write down your guesses. Whoever loses today's episode has to hide a picture of themselves in Rhett and Link's office. Has to be a decent picture. None of the boudoir photos that I took last year. No pee pee? The, no pee pee, no oh, pee pee. No, no pee pee? No, how many times we had to say that at work? No oh, pee pee at work. No. Trevor, we're busting some bean myths today. Heck yeah, heck yeah we are. But before we do that, let's see what our old pal Red has to say. Hello, myth munchers. As you know, I am a bean boy. I love my beans. And when I make them at home, I often soak them because people say you should soak them. What happens if I don't soak them? Do you have to? 
Wowie zowie. I can't believe he said that. That was crazy. Does crazy he guy. need to soak him? Um, yeah, Rhett's all about the soaking. Uh, yep. Do you remember in Rhett's last meals when he dropped the bombshell, he doesn't really like beans that much, and then he kind of <laughs> said it in one episode, and then yeah. he can't differentiate between his real life and the content that he makes, and now the content is informing his real life decisions and patterns? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> I feel the same way about, you know, presenting myself as yeah. stupid and young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't know who I am <laughs> actually anymore. Versus this is who I am on screen. It's yeah. pretty crazy. <laughs> they say you gotta soak beans uh, or they won't cook properly. And it makes a little bit of sense. There's certain foods that you do that to. You kind of have to like rehydrate that so the water penetrates mm. evenly. The theory is that when the bean is fully dried like this, the water will start to penetrate the outer layers before it can get to the inner layers, giving mm. you a weird, mushy texture. Oh, <clears throat> no, I'm excited. I mean, you know me, I love soaking. Uh, yeah. Grew up in Idaho, you know, big Mormon population. Be so. Idaho. I'm a big soaker, uh, and also when it comes to beans. Well, for people, for people who don't know what soaking is, I feel like you should tell them. <laughs> no, Trevor, can you explain in detail yeah. why your connection to Idaho and Mormonism would lead you to soaking? Well, here's what they say: the sin is in the friction. <laughs> Did they say that? <laughs> oh, Jesus! Not Jesus. I don't know anymore. <laughs> We're gonna make beans. Put the beans in the pot. Uh, these beans have been soaked overnight. You can see, like, they've absorbed a ton of water. Can you just eat them like this? Probably. I think you could eat ah. them like that too. Ah! All right, we're just gonna pop unsoaked beans in the water right here. We're gonna pop soaked beans in the water. Because these have already absorbed some water, we have half a cup less water in there, but we'll just okay. dump the water in. Can we do it fast? I wanna get this out of my mouth. Yeah, I don't like that. You need a Diet Coke, buddy. <laughs> you need a Diet Coke. <laughs> Coke in there. Diet Coke that. I've inhaled it. <clears throat> spit it, spit it in my hand. Spit it in my, no. spit it in my hand. Uh, there it goes, there it goes. Okay, okay. I didn't put it on camera. <laughs> We're popping a bay leaf and some salt in there and making some base beans. Dump all the salt in, man. Well, you're not doing it like a chef does it. <laughs> stir it up. Yeah, stir it up, stir it up. Uh, we're gonna stir it up. We're gonna pop these on a medium simmer, bring it up to a boil first, mm -hmm. and then let them run for an hour. We're gonna see where they're at. Then we're gonna let it run for two hours. And we're gonna see how long it actually takes for these completely dried, unsoaked beans to cook. Yeah, and then we're gonna go to mythical.com where you can find this spoon, this apron, and so many other things there. We're selling Trevor's hair. Yeah, you can find my hair. I, I pointed up there, but that's not the hair we're selling. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> Talking about uh. his arm hair, you goobers. Okay, so we've had the beans cooking for one hour right here. Let's look at the unsoaked, see where they're at. We've let them cool because um, I'm what's called a scalding hazard in a workplace, <laughs> uh, and we don't want any scaldings. Um, what are you seeing? They look uh, uh, sim similar. Yeah, yours. These definitely look a little bit like a little shriveled. It's a little shriveled. The skin. There's something going on with the skin of those. This one seems very smooth and soft and supple. Yeah, these and skins got ones, wrinkly. They got wrinkly and a little bit li like weirdly. I don't know. I'm wondering if that has to do with the fact that the water's like penetrating faster, but like the inside mm. hasn't been fluffed yet. Mm, Fluffing and yeah. soaking is really important <laughs> for beans. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We make dirty jokes sometimes. It's all in good fun, and we try and keep it inclusive. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's try. We we have some cooling. Uh, yeah, steam. It's hot. Unsoaked? Yeah. Grab some beans, man. I'm gonna grab some beans. Beans look like- You wanna feed each other? I hate this. Oh, oh. Oh, you're going, I was just gonna do this, but we can go like this, yeah. No, I was gonna do a double loop around. Oh, double loop. <laughs> 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 Maybe we just go the normal way. Eat the beans, way. eat the beans, eat the beans. Ah! It tastes like peanuts. <laughs> Why is that a bad thing? I like we told Annalise we'd make this quick. <laughs> Don't hear me like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, no, no, I can't do this. but this, you used a spoon. Uh, what? I tried to not get my mouth on the spoon. <laughs> Dude, those soak. Wait, wait a tick. Hold on. A couple interesting things going on. The soaked beans seem to have soaked up more salt. It could just be because they're farther in the cooking process. Yeah. We're gonna keep this going until the soaked beans are properly cooked. We're gonna track the cook times on unsoaked versus soaked. See if it's actually worth it. Soak. Check back. Due to budget cuts, we've introduced austerity measures, and this is lunch. Eat, eat your bowl of beans. <laughs> eat your bowl of beans. They're not a bad lunch, man. No, we no. got the unsoaked beans and the soaked beans here. These have both been cooked to the same doneness. We recorded the times that it actually took. With the soaked beans, it took an hour and a half for them to get to a perfectly uh, past al dente. I don't, don't need al dente beans. Who are you trying to impress? Mm -hmm. uh, but to get them fully cooked, this took two hours and 50 minutes. So unsoaked, an extra hour and 20 minutes to get to what the overnight soaked would be. Sorry, I'm doing the squish test. Yeah, no, it passes the squish test? Passes the squish test. You can squish it. That one too. <laughs>
If you All didn't right. believe the beans were cooked, <laughs> look at this guy over. Look, I'm just checking. Okay. Natalie Portman. You know what, Jim? They look yeah. they look visibly very different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Looks like with the soaked ones, like the the color is completely different. Maybe some of the like pigmentation actually leached out in the soaking water. Yeah, that can happen. Mm. There's nothing wrong with just a well salted pot of beans, and so boy, true. do you taste the bay leaf. <laughs> But there seems to be about an equal level of crackage on these, you know? Yeah. Because that was my thing with the unsoaked. I thought it might crack more. Mm. Those like might be a little bit sort of like chewier. I don't know, like not as fluffy, like a little bit. But I don't know if my mind's just telling me that because I want to believe it. Skins are harder. You got tough bean skin. You gotta try the soaked skin. And you can even see it. This skin? skin, the soaked skin is plumper. You definitely don't like have to have to soak your beans, but I think to call this a myth would be a disservice. I mm -hmm. do believe that overnight soaking does work. This mm -hmm. is the optimal way yeah. to make beans. Yep, yep, yep. And that means that this myth, myth munch us. Oh God, we're back, baby, like we never left. Yes. Oh, mm. feels good. <sighs> Lily, give me a P. P. Give me an O. O. Give me a R. R. Give me a K. K. What's that spelled? YMCA. Yeah. Pork. That's right, we have this beautiful array of pork. Let's see what Ray had to say about his second favorite food. As you know, I'm a good North Carolina boy, so I like a good pulled pork sandwich. And I like to smoke the pork before it goes into the sandwich. But what if you don't have a smoker? Is there some way that you can get the smoke flavor in the pork. Not everybody has a smoker at their house, so we're testing to see if your meat can still be as good if you don't smoke it or if you use liquid smoke. So we'll be showing you guys three methods today and we'll be showing you how to make a janky smoker with some wood chips in the oven. Okay, so we have some mustard here and then we just okay. have some brown sugar and Tony C's mixed in. Basically the mythical kitchen dry rub. Yeah, um, and then these are a little pork butts. A lot of people think it's from the butt, but I'm gonna show you that it's not the butt. What? So this is like the picnic section right here. Yeah. And then this is actually where the pork butt is. Yeah. Um, and then this is, is the ham, here. if you know what I mean. Yeah. The ham. I added three teaspoons of liquid smoke to three tablespoons of mustard. You don't wanna go heavy on the liquid smoke because it is very concentrated. Um, and I'm just mixing this around. I'm gonna give it a little rub down. What do you think is gonna be the best method? At the end of the day, all this is gonna be pulled apart and you put everything together regardless. So I think you can still get that nice barbecue essence as long as it's like super saucy. Or right. you can just pop it in the oven with a nice dry rub. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, exactly. it's, it's easy. Um, we are using mustard on this before we put the brown sugar and Tony C's rub on it, just so it, all of this can stick on it. And it's gonna create just like a nice moist, you know, caramelized, product at the end. Yeah, so we basically just took a sheet pan and heated it up real hot. You can just put your oven on broil. And then we took a tray, I'm gonna open this. Oh yeah, see the smoke oh, of see. wood chips, cherry wood chips in a little tray. And we have a water bath down here. Um, I'm gonna close this back up. And the tray is gonna be so hot that it can get your wood chips to start smoking. All right, these look super good and I can't wait to try them. Let's put them in the oven, yeah? Yeah, so this one will go in with our smoked wood chips in okay. there and these two will go in a regular no smoky oven and they'll all be at 270 and we'll be back in like five hours. Why are we so close? You smell like ketchup. <laughs> you, what? what? Are you happy to see me or is that barbecue oh, sauce? It's just sweet baby race. Yeah, okay, I'm just saying, sure. <laughs> okay, it's been like 5,000 hours. We've been here all day. Um, we have our pork butt and um, we're just gonna shred Ooh. this meat. Yeah, this is very tender. I don't know if the different methods that we use are going to affect the tenderness, but we will see and try them out. Okay, which one do you wanna taste first? Should we try the no smoke first? Yes. Okay, this is our little control. Okay. It took a little dry. Yeah. And then we'll try this one. Okay. This is the liquid smoke. This already, yeah, this already feels a lot moister. I can't taste it at all. I'm getting like the smoky flavor of it, but it's not in your face. Like when we were rubbing them down, mm -hmm. it wasn't, it was super intense. So we'll try this one. Okay. Very porky day for me. 
Wow. It's actually very nice. It's not much of a difference than the liquid smoke. It has a little bit more smoky essence, but I would say this is the most um, tender mm -hmm. and moist. And I don't know if it's because the liquid smoke was actual liquid, so it was giving extra moisture. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that the tenderness is different. But we have some Sweet Baby Rays, and I was reading the ingredients. Yeah. A lot of people are freaked out by liquid smoke, but one of the ingredients on here is natural smoke flavor. So I'm assuming they're adding some sort of liquid or dry mm -hmm. flavor smoke to this. So if you're freaked out by liquid smoke, it's probably in a lot of your like barbecue sauces and things like that anyway. Okay, Lily is adding all the barbecue sauce to our pulled pork. And since Brett actually loves pulled pork sandwiches, we're gonna see how this tastes in the sandwich form. We made our pulled pork <laughs> into sandwiches, which is Rhett's, one of Rhett's favorite food. But we pulled this in because this, this is, is wood smoke. His favorite it's food. good pulled pork, wood smoke, the way you're supposed to do it. We're gonna Proper. use this as our control group. Let's try it. Here, I feed you. You didn't bite any of the time. I got so much meat though. <laughs> I'm not here for the bread. It's tasty. I don't know why I flipped this like it matters. Do you do that? No, I feel like. That makes sense to flip. Wow. <laughs> this is a good pulled pork sandwich. This is amazing. <laughs> it is really good. This is uh, from Bloodsoe's. Thank okay. you, Bloodsoe. Fire. All right, let's start with our liquid smoke one. Okay. Do you want to do it at the same time? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do the right and leak. Well, it's because we're at different levels. Yeah. I would hit. So whatever like yeah, falls yeah, yeah. on you, just like goes on me. Okay. Yep, that sounds right. I definitely taste the smoke, but not as much as our control group. It's very, very, very light. Mm -hmm. Like you can barely taste it. Regular? Yeah. Cool. Oh, wait. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The height actually isn't really working out for me. What do you mean? Because everything that you're like spitting out is just falling into my mouth. <laughs> It's very boring. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of sad I picked this one. The only smoke flavor. Pizzazz in yeah. it. It's just so dry and regular and like me. It's fine. <laughs> you're not very <laughs> regular. Yes, I am. I'm no, you're not. Okay. Last one. You like what you see? I see what you mean now. <laughs> Okay, this one is really good, and I would say it's probably the closest to the first sandwich we bit. You're definitely getting more of a smoky flavor. Okay, so this one obviously wins. Yes. Use your janky smoker if you don't have a fancy wood smoker like Rhett. You know. That means that this man has, has been, been much. They were making, they were making smoke come out of here <laughs> like god dang magicians. You know, they're talking about Lily's like, oh, they use a carburetor to evaporate the smoke and they're spitting in each other's mouths. And then we're here and we're pouring cereal on milk. It's because this is high stakes, Josh. How many people are making pulled pork sandwiches at home? Nobody. Zero. Not one Zero. person Not has one. ever made a pulled pork sandwich at home. Everybody's eating cereal. 100% okay? of Americans eat cereal every day. We are the people's people. You know, we're the people's chefs. We're bringing the hard hitting science directly into your homes so that you can have the best breakfast experience every freaking day of your life. You've heard from us, let's see what Link has to say. Hey Myth Munchers, y'all know how much I love cereal and the way that I prepare my cereal is I pour the cereal and then I pour the milk. It's kind of my thing. But can y'all get all scientific with it and tell me how to reduce the soggage? So uh, we have frosted mini wheats. These are uh, Link's favorite cereal. And we're going to test cereal first, which is how I've always poured my cereal into a bowl. So Trevor, right. please pour the cereal into that bowl, okay. load it up. I will pour the milk first into this bowl. People wow. say, one, they say that people who pour milk first, like, oh, you're a psychopath. It's like, no, psychopaths do not feel empathy for people and then have uncontrollable urges to do rash things. Pouring milk first, pretty reasonable to me. Then this one, we're gonna pour at the same time, but let's wait on that. I should, should explain should... the Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, oh you wanna explain no, no, the methodology? No, okay. no you should. Well, Cause here's the thing, we're scientists. Well, yeah, we're scientists. No, I, what I was. If I, well, if I can explain a three minute story about my friend who is a research chemist real quick. Okay, well, what I was okay, gonna so say. <laughs> so he was trying to code a very specific stem cell in sea monkeys. Oh, wow. And I asked him, I says, Emil, I says. They got monkeys in the sea. Yeah, that's the craziest thing to me. And I was like, what are you, or is this for cancer research? What? And he goes, no, we're just doing it to know it. 
and there was no application of it, just trying to get a specific stem cell in a sea monkey just to write it down. Okay. And that's what we're doing. Science for the sake of science. remember like five minutes ago when Annalise was like, we're a little bit behind, let's pick up the pace. No, no, I have no object. <laughs> I have no idea where we are right now. All right, okay. on three, one, two, go. Wow. Wow. So what okay. we're gonna do, now I'm gonna pour the cereal into this. Okay, cereal goes on top of the milk, rested gently on the milk. milk oh my god. Going in. I like to okay. sprinkle the milk around. All right, okay, start the timer. Thank you. Start. We're gonna start eating the first bowl after one minute to test the soggage levels. It's gonna be the same. Are we stupid? Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna after one minute to see the soggage levels because that's when you take the milk, you put the cap on, you put it back, you drink your coffee. You know? wait, wait, hold on. What? I think the same time might actually be different. It looks way better. We've aerated the milk <laughs> in a way that I think is really pleasant. <laughs> Cereal first, cereal first, get in here. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna have two, ah, uh, fat and coil. Mm. No, right. we gotta squeeze one, we gotta squeeze one. Squeeze it. But now we're running out of time on this one. Driver, driver, get over here! She is. Oh, my spoon. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I've got all three cereals in my mouth. <laughs> I'll tell you what we're really testing for is the myth that Josh likes having three bowls of cereals in front of him. Confirm. We munch that myth. I'm having a great time. Now, <laughs> to simulate the end of this. <laughs> we could have been, you were working for the best baker in, one of the best bakers in the world. You were making croissants. You were doing your own. And now we're here. Mm -hmm. We're going to wait eight minutes to simulate the total cereal eating process to see how they're sogged at the end. As you can see, they're all currently submerged in milk. Check back. And then these sea monkeys are gonna change. <laughs> They've created their own civilization. They had music, they had their own language. They actually figured out how to ferment grain into alcohol. The sea monkeys were partying. And you're talking about the three-celled organism sea monkeys. <laughs> yeah, I got up to four by the end of it. Shoo! Cereal's done. <laughs> Cereal's been sitting. It's been eight minutes. It's been sitting for eight minutes. Trevor, give them the old squeeze Hold test. On. I'm gonna make sure they get all out at the same time so we don't have any extra soakage Yeah, here. that's such a good idea. Yeah, well you gotta have the science of it. That's okay. so good. And now we're gonna get the squeeze. Regular Marie Curie over here. Do you want me to squeeze it or do you want yeah, squeeze Yeah, it. squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. This really does squeeze like an accordion and I will say that's fun. Right, um, now you gotta get that, okay. get that one. Now, we'll see, now this one, it's a bit of a fractured one. I think it's only about 80%. So Trevor, if you can write down in our lab notes <laughs> that this one should be about 80% volume. Um, okay. Well, no, what'd you learn? What'd you learn? There's more milk in these bowls yeah, than there is in these Yeah, maybe I squeeze harder. I'm stronger than you. Okay, whatever, dude. Can you just be scientific for two seconds? I'm sorry for. for the F word, okay? I just am really trying to take this seriously. All cereal should be fully sogged. I'm gonna start meal prepping my cereal. <laughs> Sunday night, I'm pouring all the bowls. That way I can eat them fully sogged by Friday. Uh, fellow scientists, what are you noticing? Cereal, <laughs> dude. <laughs> no, but remember the aeration on the milk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, see yeah. if that comes through. <laughs> well. But chill it like a fine wine. Sure. <laughs> Do you taste the tannins? Is this the dumbest myth we've ever tested on? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. There's no difference. There's no difference. Any justification that you have in pouring the milk first or the cereal first or for whoever's doing it at the same time, just making a mess. It's all in your own head. It's yeah. all you trying to sort of uh, gatekeep a personality trait of yourselves and to create mm -hmm. a false enemy. As I believe Joseph Schmidt said, the concept of the political is that which divides friend and enemy. Take the politics out of your milk and cereal. Cereal first. You put the milk first. There was a splash. A drop of milk splashed out and pour the milk mm. first. Only psychopaths pour milk first. Okay. All right. So that means that this myth munched us. Wait, no. We munched right? that myth? No, because that's the bread. That was good. Smash burgers are one of Link's favorite foods. Let's hear what he has to say about them. One of my favorite foods is burgers, specifically of the smash variety. Now, I've seen people when they're making smash burgers, they start with a ball of meat and then they smash it. Do I have to do that? Uh, most people when they cook smash burgers, they are forming the meat into a ball, they're seasoning the ball, and then they're pressing that down. In theory, you're smashing all of that meat 
into a heated surface to get an excess of Maillard reaction, scraping that up. People seem to love it. I always form it into a patty first, season that, and then smash it, because I think you get weird misshapen burgers. Some people like that, I don't. When you use a ball, also seasoning. Every chef, when you season meat, what do you do? You season it. You, you put it on the thing. What do you, you put it on it. You season, you season it look, more. You look at it. Ojos, you look. Ojos. You see how much stuff you put on see, it? Yeah, you see how much stuff you put on it. Let's like go. you, you eyeball season burgers. You can't do that with just a ball because you're not getting even surface. So I like to see the salt across the surface. Also, I think you get a more circular burger, but yeah. there's a chance that this is creating an excess of steam because of the immediacy of the surface area on there. Crap, mm. dude, holy crap. This is hot. This is high stakes. All right, you wanna season your burger, Lily? Yeah. How are you gonna season a ball, dingus? <sighs> you ever think about that, huh? No, oh, you didn't. No. The body like, just, conforms. I need somebody to rotate hot. it as Good. I season. Rotate, like a rotisserie oh chicken, just kind of slowly. And the reason you around. don't season your meat before you cook it for a burger is that salt more, when curing a beef more. elongates protein structures, mm. giving it a snappy consistency like corned beef. Tell great. you what, I elongate my protein structures when I'm soaking. Don't, that's the sin. What Elongating are you soaking? Elongating is the sin. <laughs> This is a great technique. Oh, yeah. I yeah. pepper my balls. Totally clean. Yeah, good balls. Totally good clean balls. and yeah. sanitized. I pepper my mind? balls when I'm sogging. <laughs> hey, up top. I know you. Don't bite your bottom lip. Stop. I gotta stop talking. I gotta stop talking ASAP. It is a ASAP. Good okay. Good, good. Okay, are we Burgers ready? Burgers are seasoned. God, why does it Where's take us 20 thing? minutes to clamp? season a burger? Yeah, We're the it. worst chefs ever. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna lightly oil our pans, right? You don't really have to, but we're gonna do it just in case. So you guys gonna lightly oil your pans? Yeah, oil go, my go, pans. Why? All right, a little bit of oil. Go, go, go. A little bit of oil, Trevor, go, go, go. No, no, you do it, you do it. I'm oh scared. my God, oh my God, oh my God. Go, go, go. Rotate, 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 rotate. Great googly moogly, Woo! this is it, folks. For those of you following yeah. along at home, this is the moment of truth. What the yeah. hell happened? Smash it harder. I did it. Smash it harder, you got I smash it. harder, man. No, I did. Activate the rear delts! Activate the rear delts! All right, now let's okay. look at shape. So, when you're starting off with a ball, right, it's gonna be harder to fully smash it. You know, you gotta be pretty strong to do it. Uh, but this is a little bit misshapen. You see right there, this kept its circular nature pretty well. It is turning to straight up meat lace. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people yeah, look for When you go in a to a burger, burger place, are you mad if your burger's misshapen? Yeah. Yeah. Give it a nice flip. Oh! oh! Cheese it! Cheese it, bro! Holy Dude, shit! Dude, that is a hell of 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 a These are the best smash burgers we've ever made in this kitchen. You've been here before. We've made some crappy smash burgers here. So true. This is coming off. This is ready to go yeah. lickety splickety. You want, yeah, you want top? You want top? Top sauce, Josh? Yeah, top, top sauce. Top, 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 pickle, pickle, pickle. Give me, give me, go, 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 wrap it up. God damn it. Give down. me the dang yeah. pickle, yeah. son of a basket. The smash burgers die in the pan. Trevor, bun, 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 Get that shiz on there. Come on, come on. Get it in there, get it in, get it in. Get it in. Hurry up, Three, thank you. Fudge. Hurry up, hurry up. Son of a freaking fudge. Holy biscuit. Nobody swear I already used our F word. <laughs> this is not a PG-13 movie. You don't get one F word. You get one F word, You don't dude. get one F word. This is, that's, uh, okay. <clears throat> We've successfully made two hamburgers and only screamed and said one F word during it, so that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here, eat it. Oh, flop. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> you have to shiver Why it. Oh, okay. Oh, you're going one you bite? Just, no, just bite it. Is this bite for me? You're biting wow. it like a hot dog. That's not how you bite burgers. Mm. Wait, is that a good way? Should I do it? Freaking good, man. That's good. Tony's got just like deep char on that burger. Mm. You know what I mean? We would have done a double, but we we're worried about crowding the pan. You go first. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna eat it like your hot dog. That honestly works. I kind of hate it. So I think <laughs> I like this one better because it's just crispier Way better. It's what you want out of a smash burger. Yeah. yeah. Personal preferences aside, I've never been that big of a smash burger guy. However, if we're talking smash burgers, you're right. This forming into a patty, getting a thinner burger before you make it even thinner really does help. Oh. Patty, that's the unequivocal winner. Patty. You know what that means? 
That, that means it has munched us. Yeah. Because, come on, please. You know what that means. Please, like. home stretch, home stretch. That myth munched. Right, right. No, we, that myth has we been munched. No, right. we munched that myth. Right. That myth has been munched? Or that we myth, munched that, that with, like, myth has been munched. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. Passive yeah. voice. That, that's right, passive oh. voice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know what that means, guys. <laughs> this myth has been munched. But we're sure. We're sure that's correct. And then one group of the sea monkeys, they actually invented improv comedy, but then the other sea monkeys got so pissed off, they slaughtered them, plunging civilization into civil war in complete disarray. So that's why I don't have sea monkeys anymore. Wow. So get a seahorse. <laughs> that's crazy. That's awesome. Guys, we munched a bunch of myths today. We did a lot of cheering. There was some spitting in mouths. What a fun time. Uh, let's go over it. Red loves beans, so we tested if you have to soak them overnight, or if you don't, it was actually pretty close. The unsoaked beans weren't bad, but they did get a bit of a tough skin on them, deciding ultimately that soaking is worth it and enjoyable for Trevor. Ew. <sighs> I know, I know. <laughs> Red also loves him a good pulled pork sandwich, North Kakalaki boy. Uh, but most people don't have offset smokers at home, so we tested a bunch of different home methods, found out that liquid smoke it's pretty good. You get some smoky flavor on there. And as Lily said, there's liquid smoke in a lot of bottled barbecue sauces. Don't be freaked out by it. Normal roasted pork in the oven was just pretty damn boring. But using the janky home smoker method in your oven by heating wood chips and letting that perfume the meat actually did a pretty good job. Also, Blood Soda's Barbecue does great work. We found that out too. I, I housed that sandwich off the trash can <laughs> off camera. Uh, wow, in the most riveting portion of today's episode, Link cereal, we found. <laughs> If you pour your cereal first, your milk first, do it at the same time, nothing matters. Attachment is the root of all suffering. Decouple your idols from your mind, kill your darlings. Smash burgers, Link also loves those. Most people ball it up and smash that directly in the pan. We found out by actually creating a patty first and then smashing it, you are making it easier on yourself, allowing you to get a thinner, lacier patty with more Maillard reaction and more crust. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Woo! All right, let's see who won the day. Lily, how many did you get right? I said, Trevor likes to soak oven wood chips, cereal first, and ball. You know what time it is. I got three right. Very good, very good, very good, Trevor. Soaked beans, wood chips in the oven, cereal first, and patty, and no pee pee. I got four oh, for man. four. Oh, That's man. right, over here. the greatest to ever do it, no team wow. money. Yeah. You are the so Tom Brady of Myth Munchers. Yeah. This is for you, dads. Overnight beans, oven no smoke, cereal first, and the ball. I only got two. Oh, oh, and Josh got three. Soak, liquid smoke, cereal first, and patty mayonnaise, my first crush. Oh. V, that means you are the loser. You have to take a picture of yourself and hide it in Rhett and Link's office. With your pee pee out. No, yeah. don't, no pee pee. Oh, that was the no only pee -pee. rule. No. I, I, I wrote it no right here. There's no pee pee. I wrote it right no here. No pee pees. Um, it's just gonna be me eating a sandwich. I hope y'all took something away from today's episode. You know, that uh, your parasocial relationship with Rhett and Link is either less strong or more strong than you thought it was. I hope you learned that soaking uh, is okay because the friction is where the sin is. Correct. Is Correct. Said? Correct. Sea monkeys, <laughs> beautiful creatures with intricate civilizations and nobody, nobody wants to go see your improv show. Next week on, on Mythical Kitchen, see orangutans. Get as adventurous as you want in your kitchen with the Mythical Kitchen merch collection. Available now at mythical.com.